So here I am. It's the beginning of January. It's literally 23 degrees outside right now. And you might find yourself in winter conditions like this being tasked to commission a newly installed heat pump system. Now, obviously, it's too cold out to do this in cooling mode. You can't charge by the subcooling method. So how do we actually do it? For years, the accepted practice was to use heating charts like this one, supplied by manufacturers to tweak charge in heating mode using pressures. Now, that worked back then because the equipment had a much more direct relationship between refrigerant charge and system pressures. So if the charge was off, pressures moved in predictable ways. So matching pressures to outdoor temperature actually told you something useful. On the modern heat pumps with CXVs, EEVs, variable components, the heating mode pressures are influenced by a lot more than just charge. So these older charts are less reliable for fine tuning the charge. Still going to find these charts stuck to the inside of the electrical panel for the outdoor unit, but they're not used specifically for dialing in charge anymore. The best way to do it now is just with the same weigh-in method you would use any other time of the year. After you pull down a vacuum on the system before you open the service ports, what you want to do is you want to check the manual for the condensing unit and see how many feet of line set that factory charge is capable of handling. So in the manual, it's going to tell you exactly how many feet of line set the pre-charged factory can handle. So in this case, it's 15 feet. If your line set is over 15 feet, you have to add a certain amount of refrigerant per foot in addition to that. The manual is also going to tell you how much refrigerant per foot above that 15 feet. So you can see here, it gives you different diameters for liquid line. In most cases, it's going to be 3 eighths. So for every foot above 15 feet, you have to add 0.6 ounces per foot. So in our example, if we have 20 foot line set, we have to add an additional five feet of refrigerant times the 0.6 gives us about three ounces. And just as a side note, the manual backs up this charging method outside of your typical temperatures where you would charge by subcooling. We can then use the vacuum we put on the system to pull in that three ounces of refrigerant using a refrigerant scale. And then we can go ahead and open up the ports, release the factory charge and start the system up. Now, assuming your blower speed is properly set and everything else, uh, you can then use this chart as more of a sanity check. It, it should give you the ballpark pressures you should be seeing under the conditions the chart lays out. So you're not using these charts anymore to do any fine tuning adjustments. If you don't have one or can't find one, don't worry about it. Now, if you do have one of these charts, you'll probably notice the pressures aren't gonna be exactly identical to what the chart is indicating. It's gonna be off a little bit, but if you do find the pressures are seem to be way off, you wanna start looking at other things like Lower speed, static pressure. You don't want to start adjusting the charge and chasing after pressures. Now, while it's not ideal, this is pretty much the closest way you can properly charge a system in winter conditions. At that point, the only thing you can do further than that is just wait for a spring, wait for the AC startup, and go ahead and charge by the subcooling method to really dial it in.